Yo, hey there everybody. So I've got one of these, this is the Shimano uh, FD5801 or the 11 speed Shimano 105 front derailleur. And we're gonna go over some tips and adjustment tricks and whatnot. Uh, kind of be going, kind of parallel off the uh, actual Shimano's uh, dealer manual PDF on how to set up and adjust these. So. Um, anyway, this particular one, obviously it's already set up and on here, and so the, uh, one of the first things that I typically see with these being not adjusted is the actual cable tension, and so, uh, what I mean by that, if we look at it, we're in the big ring here, we're in the small cog there in the rear, and let's see if we can get in here good shot but as you can see the chain is rubbing very so slightly on this outer plate or there's actually a little plastic guide in there and there's a very wee bit of uh, clearance there um, as I pedal it you can hear it rubbing there just ever so slightly so um, so this is typically what I'll see when I come across one of these sometimes it's not working um, so we've got a few ways we can adjust this we have our low limit screw which is one nearest to us and then the high limit screw there there will actually be a it's typically I think a yeah, if you look on the actual, it's on the plate here. Look closely, you can see a L and an H there. So we'll go over a couple points of adjustment and a couple points of interest here that are important in setting these up. Um, up here, this little screw is our, it's kind of like a barrel adjuster. It's your cable tension adjustment. As you can see, that one's it's almost all the way so it's almost all the way in um, so that's another the second point of rep you know of importance another is this uh, if you look at this these lines look at these lines here there's a line on this portion and a line on that portion and so it's that as the derailleur moves, you can see that's going to change there somewhat. We'll get into that here in just a bit. The last thing, if you look down the side of there, you can see the little plate here. It's a little backing plate, and there's a screw. I don't know if I can get in there where you can see it, but it rests up against that. Uh, the edge, you can see straight in through that hole, there's a two millimeter hex head these are also two millimeters take a two millimeter hex key as well okay so like I said this uh, is kind of goes along with the Shimano's dealer manual um, so it's going to cover the Durace that the, the uh, R9100 the Altegra R8000 105 5801 and the R7000 so um, you know, it is a totally different process from older derailers, and I would, if you've never adjusted one of these or installed one or any of that, I would highly recommend you uh, check out the Shimano dealer manual. Um, you know, some of the, the, uh, you know, the basic text and instructions are pretty decent, but they can be hard to follow, so that's why I made this video. And um, yeah, so anyway, I'll put a link uh, in the description there of this little PDF thing from Shimano and um, yeah I'd highly recommend you looking this over uh, there are two different styles you got your band clamp and then your um, or the straight band uh, uh, mount or you have your brazon style so I cover the brazon mounting in this uh, video and if you have a band clamp style you'll want to just uh, basically uh, ignore all that and just go straight to the uh, setting up of the cable tension hooking up the 
cables and all of that stuff. So anyway, let's get on with it. I'm gonna do a complete redo on this. Um, we're gonna do first, we got this little plastic cover here. So if you just wiggle that cable up, that'll, that'll come right out. We're just gonna leave this all connected just for ease of um, hook up later. But anyway, this cable comes out and around. We had to wiggle that out, so that's basically what it looks like just with the base installation there. Uh, so before I undo this, the pinch bolt there, the anchor bolt, whatever you want to call it, that's four millimeter hex key. I'm going to go ahead and back this all the way out here. So yeah, yeah so go ahead and take this all the way out. is this piece here is going to rotate around and I want to just rotate it around till this you got this main base piece here and then there's a little black piece you want that to basically bottom out and contact this the base here of the umbrella itself so what I'm talking about is Piece there we want it to touch flat up against that piece so you can see how that is I take my time here so if you're you know I just don't I want this to we're gonna go a little slow you can fast forward ahead I'll maybe put some time stamps but so you can see as I tighten that in how it's it rotates this assembly outwards and what it does is it just it basically pulls pulls the cable so it takes some of the slack out it's going to pull that whole assembly around counterclockwise so again we're just going to take all the slack out of here to where that is going to rotate That's our gonna be a good starting point for the whole process. We're gonna, we're gonna do our you can see how that pivots. Whenever you undo it, it's gonna wanna the whole assembly is gonna wanna pivot. But at this point we're loose. Uh, so you can get a good view from this point to see how far that thing pivots in the actual range. And so by turning that little barrel adjuster adjustment screw there, it uh, will adjust that out so you can fine tune your, basically your cable increments so the shift, the input from the uh, shifter matches the output to the front derailleur and gives you minimal rubbing and all the gear combinations there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the derailleur here. Uh, braze on style so you got a little five millimeter hex key to remove that little little hex bolt there and uh, so yeah it's uh you basically as we take this off and lay the derailleur over there you can see the little bolt the little half moon aluminum washer there that fits up real nice against that little the braze on there little braze on tab which it's not actually brazed onto a carbon frame it's actually just riveted to the carbon frame but you can see the little once we have this laid out you can see that little the end of the support screw and it just butts right up against that little plate um, so I, I don't know this is one thing I see quite a bit is bikes that roll through the shop and for whatever reason that plates just missing and uh, obviously at that point the little support screws not engaged and so when you have it mounted up in that in that fashion um, you'll get a lot of flex in the derailleur itself now your your band clamp and your band adapter they're not gonna you're not gonna have that piece so this is really just unique to the the braze on style um, so you know again it's just riveted it's just riveted onto that carbon frame so it you know this a lot of the technology of these newer 
derailers, they put a tremendous amount of force when you're shifting. Um, so they're, you know, it's kind of like the DI2 derailers. And when you're, say, for example, you shift it from the big ring, or the not the big ring, you're going to the big ring from the small ring, it's going to flex that little, the derailleur wants to flex inwards um, towards the tire, basically. And it just, it's going to give you poor shifting if you leave that piece off. It's going to want to flex inwards there towards the, the rim and such. So super important that you uh, have that little backup plate. And then uh, we'll get into adjusting the little uh, support screw there as well. Okay, so I'm going to do first... I'm going to go ahead and stick my little Allen wrench in there. And you can see as I, you can see the little end of the bolt there as it's turning inwards. That's going down into the derailleur. So that's probably good enough there. You know, at this point, you normally, you're not, you may not have that stuck on there. So usually what I'll do is just kind of mock everything up. In the approximate spot I want this. I'll maybe tighten that in just to make a little score on the frame to center the point where I need to stick this little pad here on there. So anyway, we've obviously got that on, so we're just going to go ahead and hook up the derailleur at this point. So that's our little bolt there to attach it to the brazon plate. And I've noticed this one's pretty dry, so these chrome plated bolts, it's always a Good idea to put just put some of this part grease. So always good to put some grease on the threads. So the way this, you know, you got the curved end, that's gonna you know, basically it sits right up against this curved end. You have some adjustment there. You got adjustment up and down, and then you've got some pivot adjustment there. So go ahead and put our screw in and Gonna hold that right there in place. And then we're gonna thread our derailleur in. Okay, so I got it just hand tight. We can, at this point, manually move this up and down. We've got our pivot action. So what we wanna shoot for, and you can actually use that <clears throat> Allen hex key for this. So this is a three millimeter hex key, which you're not gonna use this. Some, I've seen guys use this as like a gauge, but um, basically you want this slid down to the point. So Shimano recommends from the bottom of the plate to the top of these T's, you know, if they're just side by side there, you want a distance of one to three millimeters, somewhere within that range. So. Typically, I'll try to shoot for the one millimeter range. This is a three millimeter wrench, so if you can put that in between there, obviously you're too too high up. Uh, so I'm gonna get here to the side. That looks like a pretty acceptable point there. Okay, so haven't set anything yet, but this is kind of where step my second biggest issue I see setting these up and in this it says this in the Shimano manual and I think this is the part where people can get uh, confused just compared to the older derailleur so if I look at this just kind of where it's normally sitting this is how the derailleur was set up so that's the eventual resting point of this low limit screw that's where it's going to end up all right now the main thing that we want to do to set this up is we want to have this plate basically hovering directly over the big ring there. So, um, or what they call for is if you, it, it actually needs to, this plane and this plane should be, you, know, you can, that's how the Shimano tech guys have told me to do it. So this, that, and this, the T's, that should be, they should just line right up, it should be in the same plane. So what I'm gonna do at this point, we're actually, I'm turning the low limit screw in. And I think this is one step that really confuses a lot of people. Uh, but this, this is a two, 
two reasons what we're doing this. One is to get our, we can really look at our alignment here for one, and uh, two, it's gonna allow us to have this set inwards just so, so when we hook up our cable, we're gonna start off and get in our, get in an acceptable ballpark there to get our cable tension set up. Um, when the derailleur's all the way over, as it was previously, and I think that's where there's some confusion. A lot of folks don't want to take the time to look through the actual dealer manual for setup on this, so they they set it up like an older style derailleur, which typically you wouldn't you wouldn't do this step of turning your low limit screw to set the derailleur out there just a little bit. And so what happens is that you struggle with getting your cable tension set up. That's the main mistake there. So step one when you're setting one of these up when you want to position the derailleur is just turn your low limit screw to the point of where these are kind of in the same plane but okay so we got that set up and then as per the Shimano manual so you can see we're uh, I'm going to set this up just how they describe in the Shimano manual and they suggest starting with it tail end about half a degree and the reason being for that once we lock this in place once we get our height spacing there dialed in that looks about approximately one to three millimeters and so we're good there we got this tailed in ever so slightly so at this point we're good to go ahead and cinch this down. Sometimes it moves a little, so. I think this is like maybe five to seven newton meters, somewhere in that range. Okay, so let's just double check it. Height looks good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now that that's set, um, we're going to go ahead and tighten our little stabilization screw up against the backing plate, if I can find it here. There we go. I think we can see it from this point. So basically we're going to tighten that in. You can see it from that angle. See how it's pushing up against it. So from there, we want to have that hitting where it's just these two lines, you know, the big ring and the front derail are pretty well parallel. Sometimes I found if this is maybe half a degree outwards, the end resting point, sometimes it shifts a little better on some bikes, either than that, other than that, maybe just straight parallel or in line with each other. So that's our first step there. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and hook up our cable. Normally none of these bits would be on here. You would just have a bare cable. So um, what I do first, you know, put a little tension on this and then go up to your shifter. Just double check you're not, you know, sometimes it may be in a position where it's not quite all the way down. So, so all the way, all the slack out. Go through that little hole there. There's a little groove on the top of here. We're gonna go through the groove. Sometimes this part can be a little tricky getting it the cable under that little silver winged washer looking piece there. We got that under that, and we're just gonna pull it around. It's gonna go under the screw there. Sometimes if you know I found if you have some little needle nose, you can kind of pull on that, but um, anyway, you want that little wing all the way over, and this piece will kind of flip back and forth, up and down. I'll usually let it rest up just like so. Take our four millimeter hex key or Allen wrench. Go ahead and cinch that on down. Okay, so 
usually what I'll do at this point is I'll go ahead and just back the uh, low limit screw off maybe about to the point where the derailleur stops moving we'll kind of that's going to be kind of our baseline starting position there and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shift it all the way up as high as it'll go just to see what happens and I'm going to go ahead and shift the rear cog or the rear derailleur all the way to I'm in the smallest cog so basically all the way up as far as we can go we want to hit that the, that's the first trim down or what you could call position three I think in Shimano's PDF it's listed as something different okay so we've clicked clicked our uh, trim first position down and as you can see as you can see this line is back ever so slightly from the line on the derailleur so what we're gonna do to get our cable tension in the right range I'm just gonna tighten the adjuster screw tightening this till they are just lined up here wiggling it just to let it rest in place there so I think about right there is a good spot um, so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna go ahead and shift that all the way to the small hog shift up to the shift up to the big ring and see what we're at there So I'm going to turn our high limit just a little, little touch. So that's in, the, that's in position four on the shifter. And the small cog in the back. Big ring here on the front. So we have just a wee bit of clearance between there. So big cog now. So we're fully cross chain. You can hear that rubbing. Hit our first trim down to position three. Uh, now we're pretty good there. Drop it to the small ring. And <clears throat> look at this. here you want it to either be just touching or maybe just a slight bit of clearance it's just touching but we have that fourth position down so by design a lot of people don't understand how this actually works as far as the shifter so it'll actually shift from big to small ring here but this is just kind of a feature that keeps you from having to have a chain catcher so it'll shift shift the chain down but it doesn't let it go any further so it'll rub a little bit typically if I hit this click to the final position, then we have our clearance there. I might have basically adjust this low limit screw. There we go. And back that out. I'm going to turn it in just to see. So we're starting to move there. Back it out a little. Typically, you want to see a little bit of daylight between there. I think some of it, this little plastic piece on here is starting to come off. All right, so we're big ring, small cog. Let's go ahead and just go to the other extreme all the way down. So we're in the small cog, 
or the big cog small ring. So we got a little bit of clearance there, no rubbing. Start going down the cassette in the back to the smaller cogs. You'll start seeing once we get into these bottom two, get some rubbing there on the outer plate. Trim it slightly so we're not rubbing there. But you know, what will happen, that chain will actually start to catch on the ring at that point. All right, so we shift her up to the big ring. We're good there. No rubbing. We start going up the cassette in the rear. A couple gears up in the top, so our chain's rubbing on the inside. Click on trim, position three. And so we're good there. Just a slight bit of rubbing. That's kind of our compromise on this one. Is uh, just a wee bit of rubbing there in the big, big combo. Shift it down. Just a slight bit of rubbing there, but that it shifts down. But then to keep it from rubbing, you would want to give it that final trim. And that's basically it at this point. This is another. Frequent mistake I'll see is guys will hook these up and just kind of have that looped and sticking out. What I do is I'll pull that out and that'll help. We're gonna loop that under, around that piece. There's a little, kind of a little groove right under there where that'll just fit right in there. And then we're gonna just take our little top cap here we're gonna shoot for getting this little this uh, little long nub here into the center of the anchor bolt. Pull that back through, stick that in, and then push that in place. So yeah, that's gonna do it. Uh, that's the completed adjusted derailleur. Uh, hopefully, you found the video helpful or insightful. Um, Post your comments below. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's going to do it for today. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.